coronavirus. Fun video this week, kind of going off of what I did last week with the whole uh, Foghorn Tech House conch shell thing. If you uh, haven't checked that video out, go ahead. I'll put the little button you can press or whatever. Wanted to do another little uh, preset giveaway, and I figured I'd do serum this time since it seems like more people can use that uh, because it's not, you know, operator or something that's uh, just Ableton specific. So I'm going to do a Tech House base serum preset gonna give it away at my website but i'm just gonna go through it real quick kind of show you how to set it up so even if you don't download it you can kind of at least understand how i made it just the fundamentals essentially of uh kind of how a tech house baseline is put together but first if you like this kind of content and you're a nerdy producer like me go ahead and hit that subscribe button posting uh here once a week production videos and uh my original music whenever i can get artwork for it and put it out and everything usually like once a month something like that so yeah if you like this kind of stuff definitely subscribe and i am here for you anyways let's get into it serum tech house baselines yeah <laughs> yes yes here we are so got our handy dandy serum patch here wrote in just a quick little baseline thing you can go ahead and take a look at that if you are curious about that we can do another music theory uh, theory of tech house baselines that could be a whole separate video comment if you want to see that actually <laughs> so yep got a, our serum patch here here's what it sounds like with a little kick drum And so that's just what the initial uh, patch sounds like. That's just my favorite configuration of this patch. So, um, yeah, that's just how I kind of have it set up as default. I'm going to go ahead and turn a bunch of stuff off first so we can kind of see how I built this baseline, how I built this base patch rather up uh, from the beginning. So what I have here, don't worry about these macros yet. We'll get into that later. So the first thing I have is literally just the sine wave. I use the analog BD sign. I don't really, can't really see a difference in the waveform other than it's like, looks like it's a little bit maybe like shifted. Um, and I pulled the random phase down to zero because we want to have a, a consistent bass sound. And if you hear it ducking, I do have a side chain on this group. So just ignore that for now. So right, starting out with a perfect little uh, sine wave there. And that's really going to just serve as our base fundamental, no pun intended, frequency. That's, you know, that's really what's going to be rocking the f***ing subs in the club. So we definitely want to keep that in there. And I have the level set to around the default level that it's at. The next thing I did was add a basic shapes, which is probably my favorite uh wavetable in serum just because it's so simple and i actually have a tattoo with all the basic shapes so just kind of a nerd about it and uh it just reminds me of using analog synths which i really really like anyways i just have it routed to this macro and it's switching through wavetable positions right so this is kind of providing the character of the baseline, right? It's giving us the harmonic makeup of everything happening on top of our sine wave. So that's really what you'll hear in smaller speakers, Bluetooth speakers, those kind of things. That's really gonna give us like the character of the baseline, right? So I'll cycle through some of those. You'll see what I mean. And right, so those sound super, super harsh right now. Way too much high end for a bass line. It could work, but in general, probably not gonna want that much high end going on in our bass line. So the next thing I did was add this filter, this 18 dB per octave. And I went ahead and routed the cutoff of this one, as well as a cutoff up here, but we'll get to that later, to this macro. So you just have a quick cutoff you can rip up and down. We'll see how that sounds. I'm also using this LFO here and using it in envelope mode and it is routed to this cutoff as well. So this is gonna just open up the, the filter for a, a split second right when the note is hit. And that lets a little bit of that through, lets a little bit of that character through and also gives it like a good pluckiness, you know? So let's listen to that one more time. Yep, 
you get the idea. Also, this envelope, LFO turned envelope, is set to this sub, which is one octave higher. So this is really just to add that extra harmonic, that, you know, 120, 150 hertz kind of harmonic that is really going to make a bass line kind of pop on a small speaker. So even if you're listening on a cell phone, um, you know, you can still hear the bass line. Kind of the same thing as, as Oscillator B, but it serves a little bit more of a functional purpose rather than uh, a creative one, I guess. So if I turn that on... Right, so it's pretty subtle, but it definitely helps. I think if you're listening on a, a smaller speaker or without headphones, it'd probably be a little bit more obvious. And as far as this envelope goes, I do have this envelope time macro routed. So this kind of just makes it easier to dial in. If you want something really plucky or a little bit more thwoppy, gonna go with thwoppy. That sounds like a, <laughs> a, good, a good adjective. Okay, so I can demo this one for you as well. Right, so there, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this side chain. Sounds more like a tom or like a bass drum, you know? It's got way more of a plucky tonality to it. That really short transient really reminds you, reminds me of like a, a, the way like a drum sounds or something like that. And then, there it gets a little bit more thwoppy. And that's pretty much it for the main interface of Serum. That's pretty much how everything is set up. Pretty simple, right? So for the effects, I just have a little bit of distortion on it. Um, quite a lot of distortion, actually. This is actually adding a ton of character because I have the drive pretty high. I also have this envelope and this macro routed to this filter within the distortion unit. So that's adding a little bit of extra character and kind of just mimicking what this filter is doing here. Um, just in the distortion unit. The next thing I got is a little EQ, and this is routed to this macro right here. So typically in a lot of these Tech House songs that um, I like to listen to, and even the ones that you know I like to make and stuff like that, they will have the bass line kind of teasing in the intro, and this just makes it really, really easy to high pass it so you don't get a super bassy intro. You know, nobody wants a super bassy intro because then when the beat actually comes in, doesn't really feel like anything changed. So this is just a really quick way to high pass. Right? So this is in the intro. You get the idea. And last but not least, got a little compressor on here. Did you guys know that this thing is, you can use it as a regular compressor and not as a crazy OTT? Pfft, wild, right? Anyways, I got it set to a 3.1 ratio. Threshold is just on default. Attack is like 50 milliseconds. Release is like 70 or 80, something like that. It's literally just doing like 3 dB of gain reduction. It just, so even if you start to get really crazy with uh, some of the effects and stuff, it still keeps that little pluckiness that you want in a nice tech house baseline. And that's pretty much it, guys. So, yeah, pretty simple patch this week. I do have it for download at my website, whenyouknowmusic.com. Link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and grab that. Go ahead and grab all that free stuff, honestly. It's it's all, like, I use it all the time. So, uh, if you like my music, then you probably want to grab that. Anyways, guys, remember to like, subscribe, do all the things, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.